Stuart at HRDNZ, um, and obviously um, very well known around the community. Um, usually I see Miriam doing um, Sludel presentations, um, although I have seen a couple of theme ones as well. So um, very much looking forward to seeing this, and um, I'll shut up and hand over. There you go, Miriam. <laughs> Hi, sorry about the lag there. It took ages for my microphone to re-enable again. Okay, um, I am going to switch pods, and I am told on good authority that this switches it for everybody. <laughs> and you should all now be seeing my presentation. Excellent. So I'll get started. Um, if you are here for the starter guide to customizing Moodle themes, you're in the right place. If you're not, feel free to stay. Um, and I am just, I'm going to leap right on into it. I am, as Shane said, Miriam. I work for HRDNZ. Stuart Milor, who's down there in chat, is the person who I work for. And um, there's a few other very familiar names in chat as well, people who I work with. Hello to everybody. OK. Um, oh. That was actually something that I haven't. Aha! Figured out how to get to the next slide. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. So, a uh, quick overview of the topics that I will be covering. Um, and once I've given you the overview, I will start in on those topics. So, we're going to be looking at the importance of using a local copy of Moodle to do your theme development as opposed to a um, a site hosted externally. Uh, the tools of the trade, or the tools of my trade, um, which are Firebug, I use the Web Developer Toolbar, and the I will show you the CSS editor that I use as well. Um, the settings that you need to make sure you have set up in Moodle in order to do your theme development properly. Um, how to find, download, and install themes in Moodle 2, how to duplicate a Moodle 2 theme, and why it is important that we do not ever, ever, ever edit core themes. And um, then into the fun bit, which is the screen sharing bit, which is using a theme settings page and using a theme's custom CSS box with Firebug. Because the point of today's lesson is not so much to um, go into the back end of Moodle or to touch the CSS files themselves, um, but to use a theme with an existing settings page that has a custom CSS box already and um, changing things in a theme that way. And that way you don't need to be a back-end administrator of your site. You can just edit your themes by being a front-end administrator. Oh my goodness, that's incredibly difficult to see. Um, right, <laughs> those links didn't look like that on my copy of the presentation. So, uh, the local copy of Moodle, there are a few different ways that you can get a local copy of Moodle working on your um, computer. The easiest way is these bottom two links, which are the um, prepackaged installations by Moodle.org HQ um, for Mac or Windows, and um, clicking on those will take you to uh, a different browser. Hang on. Clicking on those will take you to one of these pages here, which is the package, the installer package for Mac OS X or Windows. And those are really easy to install. You basically download them as a zip file, unzip them, and follow the instructions in the package. And then you're pretty much up and running with your version of Moodle. The other way to do it, which is how, and I just realized that I am not sharing my screen, so that's Fine, just take my word for the fact that it's there. The other way to do it is the way that I've done it, 
which is by, because um, I'm on a Windows computer, I have used the WAMP server uh, program, which is the very first link. And that is, um, you set up the actual, it's like setting up a little virtual server on your machine, and then you just download the normal Moodle package and install it. So that's, if you're a little bit more au fait with how to install Moodle onto websites, it's pretty much the same than how to install Moodle onto your local machine. The reason that it is really important to get a version of Moodle working on your machine locally is that you can just update the files and the moment you save those files, they are updated. Um, there is no having to save the file, upload it, then refresh your, um, your site. It, um, it certainly speeds up the process, especially if you're making lots of small little changes all the time, which I am often doing. I'm often doing one line, saving, checking, doing one line, saving, checking. So um, if I were to have to upload that every time, it would add a lot of time to my theme development. So, local copy of Moodle, that's how it all goes. Tools of the trade. So, um, the, the things that I use when I am doing my theme creating or editing, uh, the, the thing that I can no longer live without now is the Firebug extension for Firefox. Um, I understand that it also is available in Chrome and other browsers, but I use it in Firefox. So uh, the links are there. Get Firebug is that first one. It is absolutely invaluable. And I have to say that um, when I first started using it, it just confused me because I wasn't sure what to do with it. But um, I will remember to remind me at the end to provide you a link to um, HRDNZ's YouTube channel. Or if Stuart wants to quickly chuck that into the chat, that would be awesome. Um, there are some training videos in our YouTube channel on how to use the Firebug extension specifically for editing Moodle 2 themes. So go have a look at those. Now, the other thing that I use, oh, if you just go to getfirebug.com, that will show you all of them. It'll, um, it'll ask you which browser you want to download it for. <clears throat> Uh, now, the other one that I use is the Web Developer Toolbar. Thank you, Stuart. Um, which, yeah, I prefer the Firebug one, Julian. Um, just personal preference. I've tried using the Chrome's inbuilt one, and I don't like it. And I think it's just because I am so used to how Firebug works. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So if you if you like the inbuilt Chrome one, good on you. Um, <laughs> and if I had started using that one first, it's probably the one that I would have liked first. Okay, so the Web Developer Toolbar is something else that I like to have installed. It's just really good for checking um, different widths of screens and things like that. So you can use the Web Developer Toolbar to basically resize your window automatically for you to see what the website would look like on a 1024 by 786 screen and so on. And um, and then the other two things that I've got up there are um, Komodo Edit, which is my particular CSS editor of choice, um, mainly because Komodo Edit is very cross-platform. It's free. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, so it doesn't matter which operating system I'm using when I'm doing my theme development, I can always be using the same um, CSS editor, which for me is definitely a bonus. So that's the one that I use. And then the other thing that I will briefly show you guys is the um, CSS theme tool, which is a block, a third party plugin, um, a block that can be added to your Moodle site, which can help you with your theme development. All right, before we even get started with uh, theme development in Moodle, there are a few things that um, I recommend that you turn on or off in your Moodle settings. So the first thing is under the um, Appearance Themes Theme Settings page on your site administration, 
is to turn on theme designer mode. This will stop Moodle from caching all your pages and it means that when you refresh your page, it will actually go away and find all the new code that you've just edited and display that. Whereas if you have theme designer mode turned off, then Moodle is very good at caching all that information and will show you um, no changes. Uh, on that very same page, <laughs> on that very same page, it is um, usually a good idea to make sure you have something added into the custom menu box so that you can style your custom menu. Because if nothing's added, then your custom menu won't show up, and it's very easy to forget to style that along with the rest of your theme. So I always have just the basic um, underneath the custom menu. There is an example of how to use the custom menu, and on my um, test site, I just copy and paste that into the custom menu box, and that gives me a menu with some sub-menus and some sub-sub-menus. So um, I can start, make sure to style all of those correctly. And um, also, not essential, but very, very useful, enable the use of themes in courses and theme changes by URL. Yes, thank you, Richard. I do that as well. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I usually add home as the first one, and it just goes to the home page. Thank you for reminding me. Um, and then the other thing that I um, make sure to change in my settings is I go to the language and language strings, uh, language settings page, and I disable language string cache. Um, and what that does is it means that um, you know that page that you get after you choose your theme, which usually gives you a little bit of a brief on who made the theme and um, and any sort of credits and anything like that. And if you have, uh, by default, the language string cache is on, if you have that switched on, you won't necessarily see any changes on that page. So um, I usually turn that off as well, so that when I'm tweaking that particular page, I can see the changes that I've made. Right, so finding themes. There are two places, two main places. There are lots of other places too, but there are two main places where you can find themes. The new themes database on Moodle.org, um, which has a whole bunch of gorgeous new Moodle 2 themes and the old themes database, which I've provided the links to both of them here. Um, the thing to note is that Moodle 2 will not accept Moodle 1.9 themes. So you can't download a Moodle 1.9 theme and install it on your Moodle 2 site. It won't work. Moodle 2 has completely changed the way that themes work um, for the better, in, in my humble opinion. <laughs> um, and so the whole structure of the theme folder and the themes and everything like that is completely different. So um, the old themes just point blank will not work, not without some customizing and tweaking and, um, and reworking. So you cannot use the old themes. You have to get someone or make it your little mission to change any. Um, and it's a, and also, yeah, complete rewrite. That's the one. Um, and when you are um, copying the themes, so they, they install the same way that um, themes installed previously. You just download the zip file, unzip it, copy the theme folder into your themes directory on your Moodle installation. But um, most themes now, because they come with a version.php file as well, which I'll show you when I'm showing you um, some other stuff later, um, usually require you to go to your notifications page on um, Moodle 2 if you're not automatically prompted to do that anyway after you've installed your theme on there. And just do the um, plugins verification with the upgrade button down the bottom. So. Duplicating themes. Here is a three-step. <laughs> Anyone who knows how to duplicate themes in Moodle 2 knows it's way more than three steps. But here is a three-step process for duplicating a theme in Moodle 2. 
copy and rename the folder, and I will demonstrate this in a minute. Um, rename the language file, and um, to have the new theme name rather than the old theme name. And then this is the bit that's a that's a long process, which is find and replace all instances of the current theme name in all files within the new theme folder. And if a theme comes with settings pages and has overwritten some renderers and has a version.php um, file and all that sort of stuff, you can find that theme name shows up in a lot of different places. And then my little disclaimer down the bottom, do not ever edit a core Moodle theme. <laughs> and the next screen, why? Why don't you edit a core Moodle theme? Because whenever you update Moodle, even to do little security updates, those edits will be overwritten as those themes are part of the Moodle code. <laughs> because I told you not to. That's the one. Um, <laughs> what you also, what you change in a core theme may affect other themes as they are often used as parents for other themes, which means that another theme says this theme is the parent, so any CSS that I don't set in my theme will be taken from that theme. So um, don't ever, just no. <laughs> hands off those, <laughs> hands off those core themes. Um, and it is just best practice not to edit something without making a copy first anyway. Absolutely. Now watch. So this is, <laughs> so I won't be able to see your comments for a little while um, as I demonstrate a few things because I'm going to switch off the this sharing and I'm going to share my screen instead. <laughs> Shush Julian. No inciting rebellion. Okay, so stop sharing and share my screen, hopefully. Desktop, share. It says another connection with this ticket is already in progress. What's that about? Uh, are you, oh. are you guys seeing my screen? If I just minimize that, can you guys see my windows? I can see your messages. That's very awesome. Yes. Oh, sure, Stuart. Okay. Um, <laughs> brilliant. So, <laughs> so the first thing that I said was a three-step process, which was um, duplicating a theme. I'm just going to quickly show you that even though I'm not going to do any actual tweaking of a theme at the back end, because that's not what this is about, I do want to show you how to duplicate your theme so that if you do want to tweak a theme, um, an actual theme's code, and you want to use an existing theme, that you're not doing the very bad thing, which is to use a core theme. So I'm going to duplicate base. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it again, and then I get one called base copy. Maximize my window. Is that better? Cool. And I'm going to rename this to um, Miriam is cool. <laughs> okay. So, my new theme, Miriam is cool. It won't work at the moment. That was just step one. Step two was go to the language um, and then forward slash en usually file and rename that. You can see it's called theme underscore base. I need to call that theme underscore Miriam is cool because that's what I called my theme. Now, here's the, here's the bit that's... that's step three, but it's really about 20 million steps, which is basically to open all the files, and that might, please be, I'm sorry, I do tend to thump my keyboard. <laughs> Hang on, and that is, is opening, it's just thinking about it. It doesn't usually take this long. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No comment, Julian. Okay, so I've opened that. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go and I'm going to open my config file and my version.php file. Now there's not usually anything in layout that needs renaming or in pics or in style. So I'm, I'm going to ignore those for now. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so I've I've opened all the one all the files that aren't in that aren't in layout picks and style because the layout files don't usually have the theme name put in them. The pics is just um, pictures and the style is just CSS and that doesn't usually have the theme name in it or shouldn't. So the only files that I've got left are um, these three files here, the three PHP files. And this is quite neat um, in that I can do a find and replace in all open files for the string base and replace it with Miriam is cool. And save, save, save. So theoretically now, if I go back to my site and go to the notifications page, <laughs> so I cross my fingers and hope I've done everything right, um, I should have here, yay, oh, I, I haven't renamed something, hang on, in, in this it still says it's called base, so I'm going to rename it there, Miriam is cool. I'm I am not even able to keep up with the chat at the moment, so I hope you guys are okay. I'm going to click Upgrade. And success! So there we go. Now if I wanted to, I could go into the Miriam is Cool theme at the back end and make whatever changes I like and rest assured that my base theme, which I used um, to copy it from, is left untouched, which is a good thing because base tends to be the parent theme for a lot of other things. Now, um, the main thing was actually to show you guys how to make changes to your Moodle 2 theme without having to touch the code. So I'm going to close all of these. Close down Komodo edit, because I don't need it. All I need now is I need my Firebug extension, and I need a theme with a settings page. So what I've done is um, you can find out which of your themes that you've got installed have a settings page. by If you go to um, Site Admin Appearance Themes, anything that's listed here, is a theme with a settings page because these are their settings pages. So the theme that I'm using at the moment is non-zero because I thought it looked nice <clears throat> and it has a settings page and I like it because it has a really simple settings page which means that I don't have to scroll down past a whole bunch of other things to get to the custom CSS box. There it is. So here comes the fun bit, Firebug. Um, when you open up Firebug, in Firefox anyway, um, it comes up as a, a little section of your screen down the bottom here which can be resized. As you can see, normally I have it reasonably big. <clears throat> And the left-hand side here uh, usually displays the HTML that's on the page. And the right-hand side here displays the style or CSS that is associated with whichever element is highlighted on the left here. So if I click on header menu, then that's the style, all the style um, elements that are associated with that. If I click on body, then that's all that stuff. Now, rather than having to drill down through the actual HTML to find the thing that you want to edit, 
there's this really awesome thing at the side here, not sure if you can see where my mouse is, called the Element Inspector tool. So I'm going to use this, and I'm you can see as I move around the page that there's a little pale blue box that follows my cursor around. Now, positioning this box correctly can sometimes take a bit of tweaking, but as I move around the page, I can see that this box moves into different places. So the first thing that I'm going to change is this heading here, the Beginner's Guide to Moodle Themes. So once I've got my box, and I'm pretty sure it's um, around that header and that header only, I'm going to click, and that like locks it in. And I can double check that I'm in the right place down on the <clears throat> in the HTML panel here, and I can see that it is on the H1 class header main, Beginner's Guide to Moodle Themes is what's highlighted, so that's the correct thing. So up here I've got a little bit of um, CSS that says, has custom menu page header H1. Now, it's very tempting to put my extra little bit of CSS in here because um, it's the first one at the top, but you do need to read the things that come up, and this is has custom menu, which to me says that if I don't have the custom menu and I put something in here, then that may not be applied. So I'm going to come down to this one instead, which is page header H1. And I'm going to add a new property. And I'm going to make it oopsie, red. Now you can see immediately that when I put in the um, color property or element, I always get confused between those words, so please excuse me if you're an actual CSS guru and I'm saying the wrong word. You guys can see what I mean. Um, <laughs> if I put in that in red, you can see immediately up here that that's changed to red. Now, making changes in Firefox is not a permanent change. If I refresh my browser, that has now gone back to white. So, once I have actually made my change and I like it, this is what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to copy this whole um, this whole little block that I've made the changes to, and I'm going to put it in here. Now, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to remove very carefully the lines that I haven't changed. And the reason that I do that is because I like it to be clean, and I like the custom CSS box to only contain the stuff that I have actually changed. Um, so it now says page header H1, the color is red. And if I go save changes on this, you'll probably find that it looks white. Um, and I'm going to click on non-zero here just to refresh that page. And I'm just telling Moodle, no, no, go away, look at that again. There we go. Boom. It's changed. Okay, so um, there we go. Without touching any back-end files in non-zero theme, I have now changed my header to red. So I'm going to show this again. I'm going to um, go over the top of my menu here, my custom menu. And I can see that there is a color property here already for white. And just on a hunch, I'm going to guess that that white is actually the white of the text. And by changing it, the text has now become red. Okay, so that was successful. So I'm going to copy that whole bit there. Paste it into here. Remove the bits that I didn't change. Again, just to keep things clean and go save changes. It'll refresh and it'll be white again. 
Um, so I'm just going to click on the non-zero theme settings page link in the um, navigation bar at the top there, and that just refreshes it again and makes it go away and go, hang on, have there been any changes? So there we go. So basically anything, anything on your theme can, um, you can change the colors, you can change the widths of things, you can change the, um, oh, what was that? Yes, absolutely, Teresa, and that's that's actually why I copy the whole the whole lot, including everything, because I want to make sure that I'm also grabbing that little end bracket. Because the tempting thing is, if you change something, so I'm going to change a block header, so block title H2 or block header H2. And um, if I change this, to that, and then just take that bit, the temptation is to forget to put that end bracket on. So by copying the whole thing, I always make sure that I have that end bracket. Hang on, I have to look at what this chat is. Um, Graham, I can do that a little bit later. Um, if you guys particularly want me to, it's a little bit more involved because... Um, if, especially if the theme doesn't already have a, a logo in that place. Um, for example, this theme doesn't have an, an image already up there, except for the background image. So um, I can do that, but as I said, it's a, li it's a little bit more involved than just using the Firebug tool and changing colors here and there, and, and I can see my red hasn't hasn't gone on yet. There we go. Um, some of the things, so um, I've just done that from the theme settings page, but sometimes you'll need to uh, change things specifically in a course. And even though this is my local site, it's going reasonably slowly because I have theme designer mode on and language string cache turned off. So every time I click on a page, it's doing a whole lot of looking at things. Um, let's see if I've got a standard forum here. For example, if you wanted to come into your course and you wanted to, you wanted to have a play with how this table looks or anything like that, you can't do that from your theme settings page. But what you can do is you can have your theme settings page open in a separate tab. Non-zero. So let's say I wanted, um, I'll use the Firebug tool here, and I'll try and get, uh, there we go. See how it took a little bit of tweaking, like I'm over this one, I'm over this one, and then I sort of needed to move onto the intersection between those two to get the whole table highlighted. So if I wanted to change something in here, like oh, Oh, well, it's visible at least. Um, <laughs> the background color to red. Because that's definitely accessible. Please note use of sarcasm. Um, <laughs> yes. And put that in here. Then I can go save changes.
And then when I refresh this page, that color has now been locked in as permanent. Hooray. Uh, let me get away from that page because it hurts me. <laughs> I should learn the HTML code for more than just red. <laughs> Sorry. Red's at least easy for you guys to see. Um, right, now there were some... <laughs> no, my hair's brown at the moment. Very dark brown. There were some questions uh, which I'm now going to scroll back and have a quick look at. So changing the logo on a theme that doesn't allow you to, if the logo isn't on the settings page, yep. Oh, so Richard already answered that for me. Thank you. True. I can just use the color words. But red's so much more fun. I love making my, my um, people who are watching me, their eyes bleed. All right. Um, one of the things that I was also going to quickly show you, I'll just go out of that so that I've only got one version of this site open. Themes, theme selector, is I wanted to show you in um, one of the themes, there is the option, oh, and I've just gone blank at the moment, is it in formal white where you've got the option to change your logo using the theme settings page? I think it is. could have just checked here, couldn't I? So if, I'll start with this one. If you have a theme that um, lets you set a custom logo in the settings page, there's a few different ways that you can um, get that custom logo there. And um, one of the ways is to upload it directly into your Moodle.